Hi chemistry students, we just finished figuring out what a chemical reaction is at the molecular level. It's a collision between molecules and that collision's got to make or break or make and break bonds. All those things can happen at once. So the question is why don't all collisions create a reaction? For example, clap your hands together. Colliding molecules, no reaction. So there must be some criteria which make this necessary or make, make it happen and so let's make sure we understand what those are because that will help us uh, in the future to figure out what parameters we need to control to make a reaction happen and uh, how fast it might even happen. So let's start from there. We're looking to find the criteria and there's, no, there's two very simple criteria for a reaction. That's what we're looking for. Criteria. What must occur for a, for a reaction, a collision, I'm sorry, to be effective? We need to have an effective collision. So first and foremost, criteria number one, real simple. If the molecules collide and they don't have enough energy, they're not going to be able to break any bonds that they have to break. In addition, they might have to, as they're coming towards each other, they might have similar charges and therefore repel each other. And if they're not moving fast enough, they may not interact in a way that would allow them to make a chemical reaction. So let's take this into account and say that criteria number one is that the collision has enough energy, enough energy to break any bonds, any necessary bonds, or overcome any repulsions. So that one's not too bad. I think everyone probably gets that right off the bat. If we don't have enough energy to break the bond, it's not going to happen. The second one's a little bit more esoteric, and I'm going to give you an example. I want you to imagine this reaction, the reaction of molecule AB colliding with some atom X, forming the atom A plus a new molecule BX. All right, so if you might, if we did this as a Lewis structure, we might say, hey, the AB bond, whatever it is, in the reaction is being broken and it's forming the BX bond. So we might even be able to do something like this. We might even be able to create a, 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 an in-between picture. So let's, let's make an in-between in picture here right here, call this the transition state. And this is kind of showing a snapshot of what we think might be happening as these collide. At that instance of collision, the A and the B are very close to the X. All right? And we're going to follow the process of what's going on. During the collision, it appears that the electrons we see in, in, that are in this bond get moved over to here to form our new product. So here's our reactants that we started with. We've got some intermediate area time frame, it's called a transition state, and our products then are this A atom plus B bonded to X. So you can see that the electrons did move. Uh, in organ when you do organic chemistry, they'll do this a lot. They'll move the electrons around. But if you look at it, this tells me a very important thing, and it's this. What if instead the collision had happened this way? What if a B, A, this molecule, had moved towards an X? Then the transition state would be something that looks like this. It would have been a B bonded to an A near the X. I think you can see that this will not create the right product. If these electrons were to go over to here, we would end up with a B plus an A bonded to an X, and that is not what the reaction does. Therefore, only this first collision right here is successful. So our second criteria is we must have a collision that occurs with the proper orientation. And that orientation must be such that the proper bonds are broken, or made. So let me summarize that and I'm going to stop and write this down real quick and it'll pop back on the screen in just a second. So let's summarize. We know that there, uh, an effective collision, one that will turn into a chemical reaction, must occur with enough energy to break any necessary bonds and overcome any repulsions. In addition to that, 
these collisions must occur with an orientation that allows the appropriate bonds to be made and to be broken. We need to keep this in mind because knowing these two criteria will allow us from here on out to know what parameters of the reaction we control so that we can maximize the number of reactions that happen or even minimize the number of reactions that happen.